Hi everyone. Today, I'd like to share the results of our pilot study related to voice cue perception and use by children with single-sided deafness and a cochlear implant. If you hear a person talking, it's often relatively easy to determine whether it's a man or a woman who's speaking. And that is thanks to the voice cues like fundamental frequency and vocal tract length that you can extract from the speech signal. However, we know that adults with cochlear implants often struggle to hear the difference between a male and a female voice. Recent studies have shown that children with cochlear implants, in contrast, are able to do this. And that raises the question, why is there a difference between children and adults with cochlear implants? One way to investigate this is to look at the perception and use of voice cues by children with single-sided deafness and a cochlear implant. They are often implanted early and they have bilateral access to sound, just like children with cochlear implants. But on the other hand, they do have acoustic hearing experience, like adults with cochlear implants. So that's what we did. We had a group of children with single-sided deafness who received their cochlear implant around the age of one year. And we let them participate in three different tasks, a task for voice cue perception, a task for gender categorization, and a task for speech, mass speech perception. For voice cue perception, we let the children listen to three nonsense words. It was the same word three times, but in one of the three iterations, we changed either the F0 or the VTL cue. And then we used those, uh, those stimuli to determine the children's just noticeable difference for each of the cues using an odd one out task. If we look at the results, we see that for fundamental frequency or F0, the children have similar thresholds with their cochlear implant compared to their normal hearing ear. Out of the nine children we tested, eight of them have a just noticeable difference with their cochlear implant below 12 semitones, which is the cutoff for the typical difference between a man and a woman. In contrast, if we look at their perception of VTL cues, we can see that all children had better, so smaller, just noticeable difference with their normal hearing ear compared to their cochlear implant. Out of the nine children we tested, only three had a just noticeable difference between, be, uh, sorry, below 3.6 semitones, which corresponds to the difference between a man and a woman. Finally, we also found that our single-sided deaf children had better thresholds for VTL with their CI ear if they used their device for more hours per day. So now we know that children can perceive F0 cues and uh, maybe a bit less well also VTL cues. Let's take a look at how they use them to categorize voices. To do that, we let them listen to a voice and then we showed them a picture of either a man or a woman. And then we asked, does this picture match the voice you just heard? Then we could look at how they weigh the different F0 and VTL cues we present them with to come to a decision. If we do this task with normal hearing listeners, be it children or adults, we see a very typical answering pattern that we would expect. If the F0 and VTL cues both point towards it being a woman who's talking, we can see that most listeners indeed indicate that it's a woman they hear, which are the yellow uh, colors. If we shift the F0 and VTL to be more male sounding, we see that most of them indeed say it's a man speaking which is uh, why the left bottom of the graph is always dark blue. If we look at uh, adults with cochlear implants, we can see that they make virtually no use of VTL cues to make this decision. Instead, they, mo they only rely on F0 cues, which is why you see the very clear columns in the graph. In contrast, if we look at children with cochlear implants, we can see that they, just like normal hearing children, do use both cues together to come to a decision. If we now look at the children with single-sided deafness and a cochlear implant, we first look what they do with their normal hearing ear. Here you can see that, as expected, they have a an answering pattern similar to normal hearing children. However, if we test them with their cochlear implant alone, we can see that they make no use of VTL cues and only limited use of F0 cues, suggesting that they are basically unable to say if it's a man or a woman who's speaking if they can only listen with their cochlear implant. Based on this information, we were wondering to what extent they can use um, a difference between a speaker and a masking speaker when uh, trying to listen to the speech. So we did a speech mask speech perception task 
um, that was a coordinate net response measure task. So the children had to listen for a specific color number uh, combination. And then the talker speaker was always female, but we manipulated the F0 and VTL cues of the masker speech to make it sound more male-like in some conditions. These are the individual results of the SSD children. And what you see is that the different rows represent the different target to mask ratios we tested. And as you can see, if we go from the top to the bottom of the graph, the results increase, the results improve. So the higher the TMR, the better the results of the children. What is not shown here is that we tested the children also in a no noise condition, but it would be a very boring graph because they all scored 100% speech perception there. We also looked at how well the children can use voice cue differences between the target and the masker to improve their speech perception. So those are the different columns. On the left, the target and the masker speech were female-like. On the right, the target was still female, but the masker was more male-like. And what you see is that if there's no contrast between the voices, the children find it the most difficult. But if you add a difference in either F0 or VTL between the target and the masker, the scores improve with on average 9%. If you then add the second difference as well to make it like a fully male sounding voice, that does not give an additional uh, boost to the uh, speech perception accuracy. Finally, we also found that the children with single-sided deafness had uh, better speech perception if they used their device more hours per day. We can also compare their results to those of uh, normal hearing and cochlear implants using children. Here you see the single-sided deaf children's results in red, the uh, children with a cochlear implant in green, and the normal hearing children in blue. And what you see is that for each of the conditions, the single-sided deaf children have the poorest scores. We also found an effect of age, an effect of target to mask ratio. So again, scores improve if you go from the top to the bottom of the graph and an effect of voice contrast. If you go from left to right in the graph, you also see that the scores get better. So taken together, these results suggest that the children with single sided deafness probably rely on their normal hearing ear in daily life for both the perception and the use of voice cues, and that their speech and speech perception is poorer than that of uh, CI children because they are not used to relying on their cochlear implant so much because they have a normal hearing ear contralaterally. Despite the fact that they were implanted at the same age, we do see a difference, and that suggests that it's not necessarily the amount of CI experience, but more the amount of CI reliance that affects how well you can use these voice cues. I would like to thank my collaborators for the nice collaboration, and of course the funding sources for all the money for this research, and then uh, I would like to thank you for attending this session, and if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you.